previously on Back to the Story. Hmm. I see a ballistica in it. One of our weapons. That none of your people were around to fire. Do you need something, or are you just interrupting? We have the largest army mustered here. By a large margin. And it was us who died at the gates, and us who pushed them back and kept them from sweeping through the city. We intend to stay here. Her angel almost killed you for trying to kill the people that came from Felnor. I don't think she's going to be very accommodating. All right, is everybody back? Yes, sir. All right, Roger, George, Katie. Yep. All right, so coming back to the story here, you've all just finished up with your bath, returning to your rooms, um, getting dressed once more, um, and you're all together in the room. It is now, geez, probably two, three in the morning. As you uh, enter into your room, uh, there's someone sitting on the bed. It is Emma Festus in her human form. I trust you've taken some time to clean yourselves up. I'm sure you have questions. I've found a little bit out about some of the questions you've asked me. What would you like to know? Um, everything. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I believe you did ask me to research the star of Locus. Of derivation, I have spoken to a friend. The path there is arduous, and it is not one easily found, for you have to reflect within the self and follow the river of mystics to find the well of visions and the star. The path is only known to find the river, and the well by the seers of Severa, who cannot speak. But if they are no longer a seer of Severa, they may tell us this path. It is no light matter to ask her to do this, but if you are sure, she has agreed to guide you to the river and to the well as best as she can. That would be much appreciated. We're not entirely sure when we want to go for that, but we definitely did want to. Of course. Um, when you're ready, if you're interested, reach out and we will proceed. I did some other research on some of the other things you gave me. I could not find much on this armor of sin. A few references as far as my order could find. Um, more poetic references than anything substantial. To be honest, I didn't expect. So far, it seems like nobody knows anything. That is the way of things. Sometimes these things can be a wild goose chase. Other times they're just ancient relics from a time before. None of the records survived. All the records were hidden on purpose. I wonder if it would do any good to try and reach out to the one who came to me. Do you speak celestial? No, but you have a spell that I believe lets you speak to people. True. I don't know if I've got it prepared right now. It doesn't necessarily have to be right now. Definitely don't. The fact remains that the gate is cracking and that this will and Others will continue to work to bring it down. Last we spoke, your intentions were trying to permanently get rid of the Harbingers. 
by allowing the gate to fall and the consequences of that to take hold. If this is still the case, I will aid you with what I have available to me. Do you know if there's any way to do it without breaking down the gate? As I understand it, three large categories of options are to kill the Crimson Harbingers. They will be reborn and will attempt again, but the solution there will be a solution for now to attempt to imprison the Harbingers somehow, seal them away. Um, eternity is a long time. They will try to escape. The third option, the most risky and also the permanent option, is to allow the gate to fall. Their paradox to in, and they would be able to be killed permanently. Is it the existence of the gate itself that maintains the paradox, or is it does it keep them separated? And is that why? From what I understand, a bit of both. The existence of the gate finalizing during their ritual created the paradox. Removing the gate should end the paradox. If that means they come back together, it is possible. They are seen in Black Star. What if they were simply to be on the same side of the gate as of the gate as each other? For them to be on the same side of the gate, the gate would have to come down, or Black Star no longer be a deity. I suppose Narasin could cross into her domain. She may have already, I'm not sure of the consequence of that. I'm pretty fucking positive Black Star is not going to step down from her post. Not willingly. Very unlikely that any deity would make that choice. Well, we don't even know where Narasin is on this side of the gate anyways. Amethystus, you're, forgive me for being blunt, ancient. Do you remember the time before the gate went up. After all, you are the child of a deity yourself, aren't you? I am matured, yes. I do remember the time before the gate was formed, when the world was still in flux. Well, speaking from experience, if we unleash the gods on this plane again, will our people survive it? They did before, in some pockets. They survived by hiding in the hills or running from the rivers and the coastlines, abandoning their cities, returning to the wilds. There were places like Nymanet and other major cities who tried to hold out. It is a great conflict when gods clash. Even if they do not mean to, the collateral damage of their fighting is destructive. Many perished during those wars. The Ascendant's fault, Mervella. God's fault and the Champion's fault. We fought. Many died. And some survived. I've been around long enough. Then I worry at times that my morality is shifted. I've seen so many die, and I fear I can be overly pragmatic at times. I've seen these cycles before, and the harbingers returning, never in these numbers, never all at once, never in this way. The Divine Gate, since its creation, has not been cracked. It's been attacked. But it's never been breached. Not in this way. Should we find a way to imprison or do something and leave the gate in place, how do we fix it? Can we fix it? I would hesitate to say never. There's always a way. 
I'm sure we could find a way to fix it over time. It was formed by the gods, designed by Severa, pots forged by Valasor, and sealed with great sacrifice from a Sintma, forming the anchors on this side of the gate. It's possible, though I'm not sure how much who or what would have enough divine ethos and essence and power to sacrifice as much as a god did. What about a god itself? The plans for the gate are there, and we we just need a god to repower it if we break it down. Maybe we can fix it. And as he's saying this, he's looking at Vesper. It will take a lot of convincing to find a god who'd be willing to do that. It would take someone particularly special to convince their god to do so. I think Vesper avoids his gaze. How much do you think the gods would be likely to, I don't know, consider putting aside their differences for the sake of all the mortals that they supposedly care about? (laughs) <laughs> Was that rhetorical? Mostly, yes. Individually, maybe their own people, maybe. There's long standing grudges between some of these. Possible. I find it unlikely. So let me see if I'm following everything correctly. The Vine Gate is cracked and probably irreversibly fucked unless we find something on this side that can power it in the way that Asintma did. If we break it down completely, the gods will run a war on our plane and probably destroy most of what we built, though thankfully not all. And if we walk away from all this, the gate will come down, the Anolis will happen, and, well, I suppose the next set of gods and people can try to get it right. It really doesn't seem like we have much of a choice. All of them suck. The gods need to get their fucking shit together. Preach. They have a lot of time. I don't think they're in a rush. The gods, more than just a Sintma, used part of themselves to make the gate. Most of the... Well, never mind. That line of thought's just going to destroy the good gods and empower the ones that didn't help the gate, which are the bad ones. So, never mind. I'll stop my god-killing quest before it starts. I understand there's frustration with the gods, and I certainly understand it. They aren't all Selfish bricks, huge swaths of land, the throne lands and others have been protected during these conflicts. But they are, even though their gods are limited, they can only protect so much. Other than because of the Divine Gate, is there anything, I don't know, that would prevent a god from coming to this plane? Before the gate, there was a sort of balance. There are conflicts here and there, but a understanding and agreement that if you left your plane to fight on this one, you wouldn't be as strong here, and you would leave your plane undefended. It was a delicate system of counterbalances, and it didn't always work, but In many ways, their desire to see themselves protected, their realms protected, kept them from going all out and fighting each other blindly. They might withhold from fighting all out conflict. Your idea, you mentioned, of sacrificing a god or them sacrificing themselves is interesting. The old gods, the ones that carried through the sphinxes, like Tosha, 
did something like that. It was the sacrifice of their god that carried them through, that protected them, and cradled them from the previous annulus into this one. Such a thing could be possible, in theory, to protect as a last resort from the annulus wiping everything out. Perhaps something could be saved at great cost. Just an idea, a thought. Wild idea. If, um, they're seen in Blackstar, you know, the gate gets torn down, the paradox is removed. Would Blackstar and Nerysine be essentially become the same thing again? Just one entity? Hard to say. No one's seen this ritual besides Nerysine in, well, since its inception, but theoretically it's possible, yes. Would Nerysine then be considered a god, then? Since Blackstar kind of is? She is, right? It's also likely it could go in the reverse. The split and the paradox may be what's empowering her divinity. Cut it off. Narasene and Blackstar may just be mortal again. I think either way, at least in that theoretical sense scenario, is um is good for us if it's if you know, she becomes mortal again, then we can get rid of her. If she becomes a god, then then maybe Narasene would be willing to empower the gate. In some strange twist of irony. Well, we can speculate, but I certainly wouldn't count on that. Again, that relies on something that we know nothing about. We have no idea who or what or where Narasene is. Uh, as you're aware, there's a timeline on these events. And in one way or another, we have to face it. You have to face it. Whether that's with the gate down, trying to sustain it, or any other method, imprisonment, kicking the can down the road. Well, there's one thing we do know, and that's if we're going to face it, we need the light of righteous oath. So, what do you know about... King Tempter Seether and his prisons. King Tempter is the arch devil of the entirety of the infernal fiendish line. His prisons, depending on what plane of hell it's on, are quite torturous and maddening. There is one prison which I believe you're referring to, that is outside of hell and is in the abyss itself, where a solar is currently being held. Righteous light can refer to a great many of things, but one of them could be a direct blessing from a solar. There are six in Valasol's heaven, a seventh in the abyss, and an eighth who was killed long ago in a conflict. Having a solar on your side and their blessing would certainly be a boon and righteous in nature. I glance at Melly. Hey, have you been keeping in touch with Calvin? Uh, have I, DM? I don't know. Have you, Melly? Okay, I didn't know if there was any rules to this. Yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> Been writing letters to each other. Do you want me to contact him? Well, if there's a Solar involved, that seems like it's up his alley. I was going to ask the High Beacon, I guess, for a status update about Calvin, but then politics happened. Uh, politics does tend to get in the way of everything. Well, maybe he'll be g- able to give us some insight if we can get in touch with him. And I fucking miss him. Yeah, I miss him. I'm worried. He doesn't. He doesn't have us with him if 
For if way, his harbinger, they? well, but if his harbinger tries to go after him, he doesn't have the rest of us to no. protect him the way you protected me. I'm sure he's in safe hands. But yeah, I think if if you can try to contact him. Yeah, out of character, where is he? <laughs> I don't know where he is. Uh, Calvin? He... Or Michael? Calvin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know where. Calvin's in, in around nine minutes, from what you understand. This uh, city was oh, probably wait. fighting tonight. We somewhere. just go find him? <laughs> wait, let's just go ask the dude. Let's just go ask him where he is. It's three o'clock in the morning, Mally. We're not going to ask him that now. <laughs> they might be awake. Well, I'll do it in the morning then. So we can look into that. The uh, the star. I think it's something we need to look into. Mally, we need something for you. Something for me? Well, if we're going to fight Nerysine, and that seems to be the likely outcome of all this, we can talk about ways of preventing this from happening, but my feeling is most likely we're going to end up in front of that gate when it comes down and have to deal with Nerysine, so we need you equipped for that. How would we equip me, though? Not to put the entire world on your shoulders, Melly. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have... Three items we're trying to find, at least. Four, including the armor, but let's not get greedy. Someone has to wield the light and the star. I'm sure you all, between you and Amson, you can figure it out. I assume the wings we are set to hopefully find are for our cleric of AIE. So do you want to play rock, paper, scissors for it? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with taking whatever you decide not to. Well, why don't we see what they do, and we can make educated decisions. Yeah, that sounds more reasonable. Look, I know we don't want to hear it, and we all understand that it's not a great solution, but I think our time to try and figure out an alternate way to kick the can down the line ended when the apocalypse snake crawled its way out of the sky. This is happening. And the best we can do is try and mitigate the disaster. And prepare for dealing with it. Yes. Now, what I think we shouldn't do is try to speed it along by helping Athenira. At least not directly in terms of bringing the gate down. At least not until we've got all of our weapons. I think once we're armed properly, then we can at least talk to her and see what's going on. Problem is, is that they might see our gathering of arms as a threat to them as well. Well, they know that our main, con main concern is Nerysine. What the fuck do you think they're doing right now? <laughs> gathering armies. Maybe the best we can do, or the best we can hope for, is staying out of each other's way until we no longer can. I'm sure they don't want to end the, the world to end any more than we do. Uh, that's, that's why they're invading this world. Well, unfortunately, they've had a Crimson Harbinger whispering in their ear for a very long time. It's going to be very hard to convince them that what they're doing is going to end things. Maybe we should try and get them to talk to Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker, who was supposed to come back to us at some point. I have a bad feeling that my poking around in his memories and being caught might have spoiled things. Myself and the order that I'm a part of are willing to aid in this matter. It is what we do. However, I and we must know what your intentions are. I realize that there's a lot at stake, and that there is no good choice. But if we are to assist you, we must know what your decision is, and that you're committed to it. 
Do you intend to kill the Harbingers once the gate comes down? Do you intend to try to save the gate? Do you intend to try to break the gate yourself? I, for one, believe that taking down the gate and Black Star, Narasene, whoever she is, is the best solution. And I, for one, am willing to help bring the gate down, if need be. I second that. I don't think we should be helping it bring the gate down unless that becomes strictly necessary. But I think we should be preparing ourselves for when that does happen. There are a lot of forces that want the gate down. Um, so I, I, I think it's safe to assume that it will go down. But I also want to look into ways of mitigating the damage after, after it is. Whether that's a quick way to set it back up, or getting the gods to come to some sort of agreement, or I, I, I don't know. But I, I, I don't want anyone to have to deal with all of this ever again. Yeah, I don't think that we should be trying to pass this down the road to somebody else. That means... Uh -huh. Dealing with that, that means the gate coming down. I just don't think we should be the ones making that happen any faster. We can use the time to prepare. Paul? Melly? I'm still not convinced that we have as much time as we might think, so... Whatever is the fastest. I... I'm not the brains around here. Whatever you recommend. I agree with uh, Vesper and Felix. Sorry. Let me ask you something. You three. What benefit is there to helping bring the gate down faster? When we still have things to do. I'm not necessarily saying to bring it down faster, though that may be the result, but offering our aid to someone we have a mutual goal to prevent further conflict en route to that goal, yes, I'm willing to do whatever they needed Hex for in order to move things along and hopefully prevent the war from progressing in the meantime. It's a casualty thing, like Felix said. I just don't want this war to bleed over into the divine war, into the war between harbingers. I want to try and heal what we can have a united front. Silver and Crimson Ellery are already standing together. Uh, I'm not necessarily against calling some sort of truce. Truce usually requires both sides having something the other one wants. Unless we help, we have nothing they want. The problem is we're fighting a foe, their entire people uh, in Felnor, they have nothing to lose. We can threaten them with force, we've shown that we have it, they may even believe that we could take some of them out and beat them. That's not going to stop them. And all it does is prove them right about us. Which we've already done a few times. I'm not arguing against that. Well, that's my argument for this. Some kind of peace, and it's going to suck, and I don't think it should be our top priority. I just said I think we should get the rest of our weapons first and prepare ourselves. But I think that working with them is the best solution to getting what we want. To tear the gate down and be strong enough to defeat Nerysene and Black Star when they become one. And maybe if they, at least Athenira sees us working with her and understands, maybe is willing to listen to what we think will happen if she succeeds and Nerysene isn't destroyed. Maybe. Maybe she'll help. I just think we shouldn't commit to that until we know what it is that she would ask of us. Well, of course, I'm not signing up for yes, but I'm going to, or was planning on offering our services should the deed ask what she would have us do, not say, I will do anything you say, but 
I'm going to make the offer. In fact, I don't care what you think. I'm going to make the offer. At least ask. I want to know if she'll tell me what Hex was supposed to do. Well, as long as you don't make too many promises too early. What makes you think I keep my promises to people I'm working against? I kind of grin at that. I think at least we all agree that we need to prepare for the gate coming down. That's still our plan. So there's a cord. That's fine. Uh, it was just, I'm sorry, I was just, uh, I thought, um, we'll have to write home. Our city, our home is on the coastline, and if the gate closes flood in, they'll want to move. Just hope they'll listen to us. If there's an accord with you, you seem to be in agreement, at least in general, we can proceed. As I've stated, there is a seer that is willing to guide you to the star, should you be ready for that. And if I can assist in any other way, I will do so. In the meantime, I will work with others here to protect the people and, looking at Anson, do some research on trying to pocket away some people when all this comes to a head. Protect as many as we can. When you're ready for the star or for something else, you know how to reach me. We will need access to water, to find the river, the creek, the river ideally. You know where to find me. And for now, I'm going to get some rest. Call upon me when you're ready. Melly, be careful with what you're researching. I will. I'm sure. And uh, she will stand up and take her leave. Amethystus. Thanks for putting up with us. You are like squabbling children, but... Fate has made you the harbingers, and so... I guess I'm saying you're welcome. And she takes her leave. Uh, Vesper will look to Amson and just kind of quietly go, Are you alright with this? Yeah. Just, to be honest, it's a little bit scary. Just, it's very scary. I'm just hoping after all of this we can find a way to keep the world as, as safe as it possibly can, because we're doing something that's going to unleash a lot of danger onto the world. So I'm hoping we can mitigate that as soon as possible, as, as, as much as possible. We're trying to save as many people as we can, but it feels like like the destruction that's coming is our fault somehow. Because, because we have a hand in it, even if we don't directly cause it. Like I said, I, I'm just, I, I, I mean, it's an all or nothing. <laughs> It's an all or nothing situation, you know. We, if we don't, then then there's nothing, and everything is better than nothing. But I, I just I wonder. Go ahead. I wonder if the survivors of all this are going to look at us and see heroes or villains. Depends on if Amazon makes it through and can tell the story. <laughs> People have, have well, to believe me first. Well, better make sure Amson survives. To believe me first. Tomorrow. We talk to Athenira. And then what? We have Aiein, the Light, or the Locust Star. We have the best lead on the star. Theoretically, we know where the Light is. And honestly, anything that has to do with your god seems to be a crapshoot these days, but... These days, he says... I don't know how much help she'll be to us. Well, we can 
Try your sending idea first, at least. Maybe what's-her-name-at-the-temple might have an idea of how we could try to get through to her more directly. That's the bluntest method I have. Isn't she known as the silent deity? Is she going to speak to you? Can she speak? I don't know. Fall, did she ever actually talk to you, or did she just show up? It's kind of hard to tell. They almost speak a different language. Uh, we have a spell for that. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if it works. I'm willing to try it. Maybe she just can't speak. Maybe that's the whole problem. Whatever it is, it's frustrating as all hell. But I'll try. Then, um, if that doesn't work, I think the star seems like the best ne next step. Well, Athenira, see if Aine is willing to have a chat, and if not, then the star's the only thing we have a lead on. So we'll go for that. Okay, so what are y'all doing? We're in the room still. Um, y'all woke up not too long ago, but at the same time, y'all have had a Pretty tough fight. Uh, what do you do after Amethystus leaves? Vespa, do you want to try casting a spell? I mean, I might as well, right? It's the easiest thing to do right now. Can I get tongues before I do this? Yes, I have one spell slot left to cast that. Hey. All right. Uh, I will sit down and get comfortable and hold my holy symbol. Okay. What should I say to her? Can we come and visit? What is it that we're exactly hoping to gain from talking to her? Well, personally, I just think she's the god least likely to kill us for even bringing up what our idea is. I would like to get a sense of what their reactions might be, if there's anything she can do to help. If there's anything she can do to maybe help restrain the others from going into full-out war. How do we save everything from an annulus? I don't know. I mean, her fucking gate is kind of causing this, too, so she holds some responsibility. Okay. And Vesper will cast Sending uh, to A.A. <laughs> and she will say, You are needed now more than ever before. We need to speak with you face to face. We need an answer. We need many answers. May we enter your realm and seek them there. It's quiet. A few moments go by. No response comes. You hear nothing. And you realize you don't hear the sound of the crowds downstairs, or crackling fire, or hooves on cobblestone. It's silent. You can't hear your own heart. You can't hear your friends around you as they shift their weight from foot to foot. Nothing. You hear waves below you crashing against a cliff in the distance. You can smell the salt water. You can feel sunshine on you. Vespa. You have questions. And in time, they will be answered. Come to the shores of my realm. Walk along its stony path. 
across the beaches. Meet our people. Come see me. The shadow of the end of the cycle draws near. One we've seen before. Perhaps it will be different this time. There's more for you to know about this world, about me, about who you are. The waves lapping against the shore far below you slowly fade out. And you can start to hear the crowd below again. The shuffling of feet, music playing in the distance. For a long time, she just sits there quietly and doesn't react. And then I think she just starts to sob. Well, Felix goes, grabs another bottle of wine. I suppose that didn't work, so... No, it did. She answered me. I'm so sorry for you. We can go. She says we should visit her realm and speak to her, and she has answers and things we need to know. Empson will give Vesper a big hug. She'll, like, hold on to him. She answered. And she wants us there. So. He always listens. We should, we should go. It's something, isn't it? So what, do we go? Do we go now? Do we rest first? Um, we should pro probably get some sleep. Or some rest, at least. But, yeah, I, I think as soon as we can. We'll go tomorrow. Ugh, you're leaking. I'll give Vesper his handkerchief. <sighs> All right. Well, I have no further need of any of you tonight. We love you too, Felix. You all did well today. So did you. <laughs> Please. You did? I know, I always do. It's me. <laughs> Alright, we'll let you escape our sappy bullshit. Yes, before the group hugs and the orgies. Goodbye, Good night. <laughs> Uh, and Felix will then awkwardly sit for a minute before he goes into the sphere. Um, if I still have Amson, uh, I'm going to kind of lean right to his ear and go, this is super off topic, but it kind of struck me while we were having that conversation. Why are you still pretending? These are our friends, and this is the last few weeks we have alive. Why are you still using that stupid voice? Hampson won't respond. <laughs> He'll just hug Vesper tighter. Um, is Vesper sitting or standing right now? Uh, she is sitting right now. Okay. I think on the floor, or on the edge of a bed, probably. Okay. So this is one of the rare instances where I can lean over Vesper, and I'm just gonna give her a kiss on the top of her head. No orgies, I suppose, unfortunately. But uh, maybe we can manage a group hug. And I'm going to wrap my arms around Vesper and Amson. All right, I could hear you too. I figured you meant um, Amson and Ellery. So did um, I. You said you two. Or sorry, I thought you just you three. Were there are two of you hug. standing off to the side. <laughs> yeah, but there's also okay. those. I thought okay, we just well, awkwardly stood over here whilst you were no, hugging those two, I'm just like, okay. Trying to usher you two in. <laughs> yeah, so the five-person group hug happens. I like to imagine it's one of those where the four regular-sized people all hug and the ball just comes up behind them and does that big, like, lift everybody up thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you all then go to bed? Um... Ellery's gonna wanna talk to Ball. So, 
after the the group hug finishes, if we're all kind of like settling into whatever our own things are, um, Ellery's gonna go up to Ball. You want to take a walk with me? Sure. Where do you want to go? Nowhere in particular, just somewhere out of this crowded room. Ball just uh, grabs Albemar that's kind of leaning on the counter and indicates he's ready. Um, so I guess Ellery will walk with Ball down and out of the inn and just kind of start wandering a little bit. Um, and maybe not say anything for a little while, just kind of walk. And gather her thoughts. You know, I try not to worry about you too much when we get into a fight. But sometimes it's hard. Kind of thought for a moment there that Hex had you. I did too. I was surprised. It was a strange moment. You were impressive out there. You always are. We all had our moments. You managed to get the killing blow. I think that one was most impressive. I was certainly not expecting that. I figured it would probably be you. Hamson was expecting it. Yeah, sometimes he sees things that the rest of us don't. Have you thought about what you're going to do when this is all over? I, you see Ball thinking about it. It depends. I, I don't know what. I don't know what things will look like when it's all over. If, if you had your ideal outcome, what would you want to do? Let's say we succeed, and in the process we somehow stop the gods from going at each other's throats. And things end up relatively stable. What do you want with your future? I think I'd like to get to know where I came from, who I came from, and then I decide. That's fair. You have family out there. I think Ellery goes silent again for a little bit. You know, going to prison felt kind of like the end of the world to me. Like, nothing I had planned made sense anymore. But now we're facing the actual end of the world. And it's so much bigger. And there's no time left for figuring things out or for half the things I wanted to do. Well, either it, either we succeed and we have all the time in the world, or it doesn't, or it doesn't really matter. I think some things still matter even if, if we don't succeed. I think Ellery just kind of stops in the middle of wherever she was walking and looks up at Ball. Okay, I'm feeling really fucking awkward, and I'm usually better at this sort of thing, but for some reason, when it comes to you, it's harder to say what I mean. I don't really know what I want after all of this. But I do know one thing that I want now, one thing that I've wanted for longer than I care to admit, and that's you. I... I don't know what to say. To me, the bronze scales 
To me, we're all family. Ah. Is this the, um, I see you like a sister? Is that what I'm getting here? You see that, I don't know, maybe, um, I don't know if Ball normally looks awkward. He probably just kind of looks like he doesn't have anything to say. But maybe this time, uh, it's more of an awkward, like, Ball's kind of fidgeting when he normally doesn't fidget. And you see him kind of, looks like he's about to say something, and then he kind of goes back to fidgeting. and It's just unusually awkward for, for Ball. Unusually at a loss for words for the usually quiet giant. It's okay, Ball, if that's, if that's what it is. I think, I think I need to get to know myself first. Who I am, what I'm meant to be, where I came from. I don't know. I haven't thought about those things. And then there's that flashback of, um, like, ball, yeah, ball on the boat, ball running down the beach, that kind of stuff. Um, And then kind of goes back to ball and balls, like, I mean, not seriously. Well, to be fair, it doesn't have to be something serious. I'm not going to push anything. If it's family, if it's a sister that you need, I know how to be a sister. I think we all need somebody now. I'm sorry I can't be that one for you. I can't say that I'm not disappointed. That would be a lie. But the most important thing is that you're here. Well, now that I've made things super fucking awkward. Um. I think Ball just kind of gives you a big hug. (laughs) I hug him back. And then he'll say, uh, doesn't mean we've lost anything. No, it doesn't. Whatever, whatever comes next. We're still going to stick together through this. All of us. All of us. Well, let's go back and get some rest. And I think maybe just on the, like, as we kind of turn to head back, maybe Ball will just kind of keep his arm around your shoulder as you guys walk back. And then I assume it's probably, unless you say something, it's probably just like a quiet walk back. Yeah, I think so. And then we walk off into the sunset. Family ever after. (laughs) Take us home, Cloud. Okay. So you guys return back, find your rooms or into the sphere, and begin to find rest. Though it hasn't been that long since you awoke, you've had a grueling fight with a shadowed beast. Learn much of this world, or what awaits it, and you find rest quickly. The noise of the taverns and the partying of the streets dies down, soldiers putting people in their place, going back inside, and the cold keeps them out as well. Ball. As you find rest, you feel a cold chill. Freezing winds as you wake in snow on a snowy mountain ridge, the setting western sun falling, and you hear foom, 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 foom. The heavy beating of drums rhythmic, and with it chanting, Dora Kondra 4, Dora Kondra 4, 
loud and giant, echoing with many voices on the other side of the ridge. You climb to look over it and see a valley far below, a crater of broken mountains, and in its center you see giants tall, many of them. They chant. You see hill giants and stone and fire and frost and storm. And they surround a body twice as large as any giant you've ever seen. They were sixty feet long. Just bones, broken skull, cracked. The giants toil as they lay bones of carved stones, black eyes freezing the pieces together. Hides lain across the form and animals slaughtered over them in sacrifice. You feel Avalmer hot in your hands. And you feel the beating of your heart in rhythm with the heart, the titan that lies in Avalmer. A loud slamming sound. As you see a large, tall, female, giant goddess of fire, passion, and creation. Tall, with red skin, armor of obsidian, hair long and black. The snow melts at her feet and eyes burn with the white-hot coals of a forge. Boom. Your brothers and sisters await for you. The bones of Tyrus are being mended. His age is forged. And you carry with you the blood of a titan. And our lord and father Tyrus needs a heart. Yield your tongue. Though you are small, you carry my lineage of embers, last son of Vladis. When the great war comes and Tyrus returns, the great conquest awaits us. Wear your crown, ball. Be proud of who you are. Your Baldurok, and bring the fiery blood of Titans to his grave, for his return is imminent. The fire giant giantess takes a few steps towards you. The runes igniting and burning on Avalmore and warm on your chest. What say you, Baldurok? I think uh, Brawl's kind of or Baldurak is kind of just staring at Avalmer as he feels his heart beating. And then he looks up. Is this kind of, this is kind of like a dreamlike state, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, and you've had enough visions to kind of recognize it. Alright, so I'll take a little artistic license and I'll say that uh he looks up and then you can kind of see from from her eyes um, as it pans up and you see Ball um, with this crown on his head and he says I'm coming and his crown kind of erupts flames all around and as those flames burn and the vision zooms in on Ball's face in a crown of fire his eyes igniting, reflecting the flames above him. That's where we're going to leave off, and we'll come back next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. If you liked what you heard, give us a subscription. We're available on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and more. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. And if you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can always email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. For behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, memes, updates, and more, follow us on either Twitter or on our Tumblr, back to the storytumblrcom Lastly, if you're in a generous mood, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story. We'll see you next time in Norithil.